All right, so now it's time to introduce the concept of electric potential. So when we had the electric field, we introduced the electric field because we wanted to consider the environment uh, that a test charge would be subjected to without yet determining how large that test charge was or, um, or anything about or what sign it had. So for energy, we have something similar, which is the electric potential. So when you had the um, when we had the electric field, the electric field is the electric force times Q. Now we're going to have the electric pen potential phi, which is the electric which is the electric um, potential energy divided by Q. So I did not draw this in the most aesthetic way, um, but the electric field and the electric potential tell you the environment without yet fixing anything about the charge. Um, so we had the electric potential energy, K, um, Q1, Q2 over R, your... Um, electric potential is going to be K Q1 um, over R. So it's what you, the electric potential from charge Q1. So here, um, if we consider a simple parallel plate, um, capacitor, we have that the, um, that the energy in this plate capacitor, parallel plate capacitor is the velocity over the distance, that, 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 that is the voltage over the distance. Um, this potential is called the voltage. Um, we denote it with a capital V, um, and I will try to use a capital V um, where I use those lines. Um, so the work is the charge times the voltage. And it turns out that the electric field is the voltage divided by the distance, the separation between the plates. And that's because the, um, the electric field, so remember your work equals force times distance, the work is equal to the charge times the voltage, which is equal to the force times the distance, which is equal to the charge times the electric field times the distance. So if you compare these two sides of the equation, you can get that the electric field is the voltage divided by the distance. for the specific case of uh, two parallel plates of charge. And this actually can be turned around and made into a useful um, apparatus. So you can have an electron gun by having these parallel plates or roughly parallel plates. And then you have a little hole uh, so that electrons can actually get, um, can get shot out of them. Um, and you can, so that some electrons can get through. The hole doesn't change the potential very much, so you can basically still treat it like a constant, um, like a constant potential. And you can also use these parallel plates. This example is a spark chamber where you just have a bunch of parallel plates. Well, when you have a high energy particle travel through spark plates, um, it will ionize the air, and that's going to cause, and the ions are going to jump um, across the the parallel plates and you can then see where they go. Um, but we don't use these anymore in contemporary, in contemporary um, detectors. You don't use, you don't actually visibly see the, where particles are going in real time. And of course, you're, you've heard the term voltage. Potential is how we talk about circuits, um, where you have positive charges moving um, from higher potential to lower potential, but negative charges move from low potential to high potential.
So you talk about, for instance, the you, you quantify the properties of batteries using volts. And here you can find, now, we don't have to do anything too hard here in finding the potential um, between points P1 and P2. So it's going to be the potential at P2 minus the potential at P1. It's always final minus initial. Um, and that's the change in voltage. So that is going to be K. And then whatever the, um, let's say we had a positive charge Q here. K, Q over V minus K, Q over A. And this is another example of an apparatus that you can actually um, use, you can actually generate voltage on where you're actually running a motor which is um, removing, which is removing the electrons from the, the system, from the metal.